Hi, this is Alan Gilbert, Technical Specialist with Autodesk, and continuing our series with custom sub-assemblies for overlay and widening. So in the last video, we finished up our custom sub-assembly over in the sub-assembly sub composer application. And now we're back in Civil 3D and we're going to test it out. So the first thing we've, just to show what we have here, is we have a corridor that basically represents an existing ground surface. So I have a 2% lane slope basically and a 5% shoulder and then a 4 to 1 slope. You can see just a very simple profile. So that's going to represent our existing ground that will let us change our existing ground as we go. So the first thing we need to do is load our PKT file, our sub-assembly, onto our tool palette. So I'm going to jump to our tool palette and I'll just create a new palette if I right click on the tab here and we'll call rename this to custom okay, and I'm going to just pop this out so we don't so again we'll get this out of the way to make room in just a second so to import our sub-assembly we can just right click import sub-assemblies right on the tab we'll find the PKT file We called it Wedge 10. We'll put it on the custom. I'm going to right click and refresh image. There we go. So now it should be ready to use here. I'll make this just a little bit smaller. And I'll make the tool space slightly smaller also. So we're going to create a new assembly object in the file. So create assembly, we'll call this wedge, and we'll just drop it here. I want to select wedge and just click my object to place it, escape to finish. Remember the wedge is not going to show up until we have surface targeting, so it's still going to look that way. If I go into the sub-assembly properties, you can see the parameters that we set up here is our input parameters and the defaults. So I could change these here if I'd like. Any of the codes, you can see my output parameter here. When it computes, it's going to share that. Or it'll be available to be shared. So now let's run a corridor. So I'm going to come up, create a corridor. Call it wedge. Alignment profile, that's good. Assembly is called wedge. Target surface is our EG. And we're going to pick our targets. So notice we have our EOP and our EOS. So if I have control lines to control the width of the shoulder and edge of pavement, this is where I can set those. Here I've already set my target surface, so I'm good. rebuild the corridor now I'm going to actually before I view that in the section let's just take a look and right click and go to corridor section editor and let's just see how it's looking here I'm going to, go to view edit options You can see the wedge forming here. Let's try a, another code set style. So you can see the 2%, it computed from my existing ground, and it inside that sub assembly, it passed the 2% over to the other part of the sub assembly, which is the wedge. So to see if that's working, let's go to the, because that's the same slope gonna be, is going to go all the way down. So we're going to go to the assembly that is creating my existing ground. 
and I'm going to change the, my right lane to minus 3.2. So let's assume that it computed a kind of a strange slope. So I'm going to set this to rebuild auto. So now when these two points dropped on that existing ground surface, it computed a 3.2. It passed that 3.2 over to my wedge. And you can see, depending on the slope of the shoulder, it doesn't really matter because this drops on there and it holds the top of the wedge holds the 3.2%. And to illustrate that, let's go to the corridor, back to the existing ground assembly. I'm using the right click here and let's go to the right shoulder. We'll change this slope to something severe just to illustrate. So now my shoulder broke at minus 15% but the top of the wedge is still maintaining the 3.2% that was passed from this computation into that part of the subassembly. Another way to do this of course is to split these out and have the wedge pass the uh, uh, or the wedge be a separate subassembly and grab that through an output parameter. So that's another way you could do it. I didn't need that in this case so I just attached it. So the next video we'll discuss using that output parameter that we've computed now. We're using it here already but we'll use it with another subassembly attached so we can put our new shoulder build up on, on the end of this subassembly.